Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about an interesting topic and which is going to be how to play Code Vein solo. And can you actually play Code Vein solo? The answer is absolutely. I have currently finished my first uh, run of the game completely alone. Uh, I played without the AI partner. <clears throat> and you might think that is kind of a ridiculous thing to do because well, Code Vein is designed to be played with a companion. Well, that is kind of true, but not really at the same time. Uh, so we're going to go through that and I'm going to explain a few things and uh, that people didn't really quite, let's say, understand about the game. Uh, not really that they didn't understand, but that they got kind of a bit wrong. Because, you know, I've been covering this game for a very long time. I've been looking at everything that they have revealed since 2017, interviews and all that stuff. And there are a few things that need to be, um, let's say, cleared out. So, yeah, let's go. So, Code Vein, how do you play this game alone? It is very simple. How do you, how do you remove the AI companion from the party? This is the first thing that we're going to talk about. So, for example, let's say currently I do not have a partner uh, with me. But if I wanted to have a partner, I would just go to Yakumo, for example. Ah, oh, wait, he's giving me his blood code, god damn it. Alright, it's fine. Alright, so if I wanted to just uh, add Yakumo to my part to as a partner, I would just say switch partner like this. And there you go. So, and now if I don't want to have him with me, and if I actually want to go alone, I just have to go back to Yakumo again and just talk to him and say stop partnering. And bam, there you go, you're gonna be playing alone from that point. Alright, so the game, uh, let's say, is kinda designed to be played with the partner, if you want. Uh, at least it is the intention of the developers, but it is not because uh, Code Vein is necessarily better to be played with the partner. The reason why they want you to play with the partner is because their intention when they made Code Vein was to make this game accessible compared to Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls, you know, very difficult game, very challenging, but sometimes you go through to crippling depression just to kill one boss and you get stuck for at least three hours on the one fight and it's not so super enjoyable. However, when you manage to kill that boss, finally you're super happy, self-accomplishment is there, you're super glad that you finally made, managed to do it and you know it's a great achievement every time so in code vein it's kind of the same thing it is very similar to dark souls in fact during one of the ign interviews uh, with the developers of code vein the developers mentioned that code vein is an extremely challenging game it is meant to be a challenging game from the start and not because it is meant to be a co-op game, like an AI co-op game. It is just naturally challenging. However, their intention was that they didn't want the player to feel to get stuck. They didn't want the players to uh, necessarily struggle the same way they struggle in Dark Souls. Which is why they also added the AI partner so that you would play, uh, so that you would have a way to go through some to go through some sort of really big struggle like if you find if you find a wall you have uh, a way for you to you know get through that so yeah their intention is definitely willing they definitely want the player to go with the, the ai partner and that is why they also expect you to be uh, you know like to like these characters through the story so that you have some sort of uh, attachment to them and I totally understand and I really like the story I really liked the AI partners for that even though I didn't play with them I liked their characters I like how they were and I think they did a good job on that so uh, just I'm mostly making this here to really explain why a lot of people call this game easy and all that stuff and it is easy if you play with the AI if you play with the way the intent the, uh, developer, the developers wanted you to play then yes, it is definitely an easy game. But if you're looking for some challenge, it is absolutely a challenging game without being a bullshit game. Uh, for example, let's pick a game like uh, 
Remnant from the Ashes. Remnant from the Ashes is not a bullshit game, but it is a co-op. It is designed to be a co-op game. And even though they made the game playable solo, a lot of things in Remnant from the Ashes have a lot of co-op mechanics. Boss fights, for example, during boss fights, you have waves of little enemies attacking you. You have mechanics like double barriers. You have a lot of things uh, that will uh, happen during the uh, boss fights, for example, or even in the dungeon. Sometimes you have waves of enemies. You have things like uh, some range. You have a combination of range type enemies, melee type enemies, quick enemies, and all that stuff. All of that feels way better when you play with the uh, with people online. It is meant to be a co-op game. Code Vein is not. A lot of things in Code Vein aren't designed for co-op necessarily. Uh, for example, in boss fights, you will never see uh, waves of enemies attacking you. You never see double barrier mechanics. Nothing is really meant to be played in a co-op fashion. So I'm here to explain that and uh, we're gonna have to go through some stuff uh, concerning the combat system of Code Vein. So let's start by going to a simple area. For example, the Rune City uh, Center is a good area to explain how things work in this game. Alrighty, so here we are in the Rune City. Oh, perfect, I have the cyclist with this guy going on. By the way, I'm currently in New Game Plus uh, with the higher difficulty, so things might be a little bit ridiculous uh, sometimes, but it's gonna be fine. I'm used to this game enough, I should be able to get through this. Alright, so we're gonna go through some stuff with the combat system of Code Vein uh, because it's very different from Dark Souls. If you start playing alone and you don't really understand why you're getting your ass kicked, well, it is simply because this game is extremely different from Dark Souls. It doesn't play the same at all, and there are some mechanics that you need to understand and some move sets that you need to understand and speaking of moves uh, I'll quickly go through them let me pick a regular weapon like the Queen Slayer Blade for example it's unupgraded and all uh, I haven't really played this weapon because I mostly like halberds but yeah so uh, you know very simple you have your controls I'm pretty sure most of you already know this you know basic attack heavy attack charge heavy attack there you go and then you have a few other moves like combo attack like this which is a kind of a trust dashing move uh, it kind of follows the camera as well if you want so things like that you also have your launch attack bam uh, dash attack even in a roll attack the same thing so all things like these are fine they're fun but you have additional stuff that you need to know uh, each of these moves have different let's see parameters different traits uh, that kind of affects the enemy differently so uh, oh yeah you also have the combo train very kind of important sometimes so let's pick an enemy uh, we're gonna start with this guy uh, I'm just gonna attack him all right so oh hey so he didn't, there's nothing very uh, specific that happened there, but let's pick this guy. As you see, as you can see, my first hit doesn't stagger the enemy. The second hit does on this weapon. So staggering in this game works very differently from Dark Souls. It is not necessarily the best way to do staggering in my opinion, but uh, you know, it has some implications definitely. And if you're attacked by a wave of enemy, there are different ways to deal with them. Uh, so, basic attack, as you as you just you know as you just uh, seen, they don't stagger immediately unless you're playing with a heavy weapon. For example, let me switch to let's say this Vihander. I'm gonna oh wow, that was a weird hitbox. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> All right. So heavy attacks, they stagger no matter what. I mean heavy weapons, they will just stagger the enemy no matter what. But with a light weapon, they won't. If you wanna stagger an enemy with a light 
weapon, you will require to be required to use a charge heavy attack. Uh, I don't know if this guy will e ever let me have his back. Well, he doesn't want to give me his back. But generally, charge heavy attacks do stagger the enemy a little bit more than uh, light attacks. Also, you have the combo attack, this move. Very important. They have different ways to uh, stagger the enemy. I'll show you right now. Let me just reset this guy. All right. First, he didn't stagger him. Second hit knocks him down. The second hit with the uh, combo attack is a knockdown on enemies. Wow, he's tired there really hard because I'm focused actually. Focus is also going to be something else that we're going to touch on. But as you can see, the uh, combo attack is a knockdown when you stagger the enemy. So. If you want to stagger an enemy in this game, really hard. You need to know when you're gonna, when you're gonna be able to stagger them, and how you're going to be able to stagger them. Actually, so normal attack is a normal stagger on two hits with the light weapons. Uh, light weapons, by the way, are going to be one hand swords, halberds, and uh, bayonets. So, like one hand swords, halberds, and bayonet, all considered to be light weapons. Which is weird because a lot of halberds are very heavy, but anyways, they are considered to be light weapons and their se second hit will always be a knockdown with the uh, combo attack, so R1 plus square. So that is very important to know. Oh yeah, by the way, you have enemies like the uh, creatures like this, like the slimes or the cats, they always stagger uh, no matter what, it doesn't matter what weapon you're using, they, they will always stagger on every hit. They don't, even when they are focused, they stagger a lot. But yeah, anyways, uh, and I should talk more about staggering, by the way. So staggering, like I said, uh, depending on the weapon, we stagger, but also depending on the enemy. Like, you know, these guys stagger on two hits, the creatures stagger on every hit. The uh, You have taller enemies, like the white, kind of, the white uh, ant eaters, I would call them. They stagger on three hits. Uh, white, the white giant enemies with the big weapons are generally considered to be medium, medium enemies. I'll call them. And then you have the larger enemies, like the big ladies with hammers and stuff. Uh, those are larger enemies. But yeah, they stagger on many hits. I don't even count them anymore because generally they take so much that I don't even want to bother with that. But like I was gonna say, if you wanna deal with multiple enemies at the same time and let's say you get ambushed you know i'm rolling here i'm taking fall damage it's fine uh let's say i'm about to get uh, oh no there's uh, an ambush god damn i don't know what's gonna happen to me it's all good it's fine all you have to do you can block you can roll you can also eat the damage but you can also uh, backstab backstabs are going to be your they're going to be your best friends in this game uh, not necessarily only backstabs, but everything that gives you high frames is going to be good for you. So you can also you can backstab the enemy very easily in this game. Backstabs are not that hard. Well, they can be kind of janky. Like the hitbox is a bit weird. You don't really get you don't really understand how to land them. It's a bit weird. It's a weird concept in this game, definitely. Let's see. Okay, this guy. Okay, they're all waking up. Oh no, the red guy is here. The red guy is annoying. So I'm focused right now. This is going to be my best friend. Launch attacks. Look at all these iframes. I can just go away. Oh, I don't have the right build equipped. Uh oh, I, I just lost my focus. And I don't have the right build equipped. So this is going to be... Yeah. A <laughs> gangbang. It's okay. So I died there because... Obviously, I don't have the right build. I'm going to talk about abilities and stuff very soon. But, yeah, like I said, <laughs> New Game Plus is no joke. You get killed so easily. Uh, but, yeah. If you wanna, if you are getting attacked by enemies, by a group of enemies, you have to be able to use your iframes very well. And in that case, I didn't think very fast, I uh, didn't think fast enough. But something that I could have done, let me is the parry. Parrying is very useful in this game if you're going to get attacked by a bunch of enemies because you're just going to get there's just going to be a barrage of attacks. You just 
You you just have to parry, no matter what. It's like whatever, just parry. Uh, actually, a good thing you gain a lot of icon from that. It's all good. All right. So I'm gonna show you. There are some abilities in this game that are very. They're almost required uh, if you are going to play this game solo. For example, uh, you need a projectile in your build. Why do you need a projectile, a projectile ability? Well, it is because you need to be able to uh, lure enemies one by one. You don't want to fight a group of enemies necessarily. It's very hard to deal with them uh, unless you are a parry god or you know exactly when you're going to you know, use a backstab uh, in a freaking mass of enemies, like 10 enemies following you. So you don't want that. You want to be able to drag enemies to you one at a time. Always useful to have a projectile in your build. Always required. Another ability that is very important is Shifting Hollow. Shifting Hollow is a must-have if you're going to play solo because it is the probably the longest high frame you can get from a dash. Uh, very useful. Only costs one I core. I constantly use it during boss fights. And the most important thing about Shifting Hollow is that when you're locking on, you cannot use Shifting Hollow and back dash with it. It is a move that allows you to put pressure on the enemy without getting hit. You always have to use Shifting Hollow. Even if you don't know if the enemy is going to attack you, it is always better to use it no matter what. So, Shifting Hollow, like I said, very important. I'm going to show you uh, one of my boss fights during New Game Plus, how it works with shifting holo how shifting holo allows me to put a lot of pressure on the boss uh, i'm going to go back to the ambush show you how i deal with it with this build and we're gonna have some little fun i'm gonna get no, this guy he's annoying i'm gonna get rid of the red guy first wow i got a grenade right there okay you see how i just killed a bunch of enemies right there shifting holo there you go and they're dead and if only I didn't get that grenade at the start it would have been so much better but you know we got through it shifting holo extremely useful ability a lot of movement a lot of uh, timing that you get from it good ability overall if you want to deal with enemies very easily um, aside of that you also going to you're also going to need to learn how to uh, cancel animations that is something I didn't talk about I, I was gonna say that uh, cancelling animation is very important look at this this is one square only so on your first attack your first attack is a uh, double hit but you can cancel the double hit like this by guarding if you guard fast enough you cancel the animation there you go this is something that is very useful actually because you can just spam the first move so very useful thing to do and to learn. Cancelling animation is always nice in this game. Uh, you can also do the same thing with great swords. Let's say I pick this my hander. And you know, recovering from these attacks can be a bit slow, like this. It's a bit slow, you know. But if you cancel with the guard, the guard is good because it's very safe. It's a very safe way to do it. Because sometimes you attack and the enemies are already going to attack you and you're not necessarily going to stagger them. Mainly during boss fights for example. That you can quickly guard and it's considered like the first frame of this animation is considered to be a guard point. So you're fine using your guard to cancel animations. You can also roll if you want but it takes a lot of stamina in my opinion. So how do you go into boss fights without struggling too much? When you're alone, it is simple enough. So first of all, obviously you won't have all of these gifts with you. The gifts that you will have, let's say at the start of the game, are going to be Adrenaline, always reliable, by the way. Uh, it temporarily boosts your strength, uh, your attack power, very useful. Uh, right now I have the Blood Weapon uh, gift equipped on me, but it is something that you obviously won't have until you have the uh, Dark Knight tree. 
but there's something that can be very useful which is Venom Mark. Venom Mark belongs to the Ranger uh, to the Ranger class. Oh, by the way, a useful thing that I forgot to explain and to mention is how to use combo drain during fights. They are very important during boss fights because you will need a lot of icar constantly. So you need to know when you have enough room to use it. You can create your own moment with that. Like this. Oh, I don't have enough stamina. It takes a lot of stamina, by the way. And bam, there we go. Get back my eye car. Keep using shifting holo to dodge his attacks. Or even Phantom Assault, which has iframes. Very reliable, as always. He's already transforming. Counting him. Stopping myself. Oh, that was a perfect dodge right there. Okay, come to the train. If I make a mistake, I'm gonna get hit. See, I can also use Shifting Hollow to dodge into this type of AoE attacks. Which happen a lot in fights. They use a lot of AoEs like that. Okay, there we go. I was very early. I was very lucky there. I could take damage for no reason. Because I am a dumb head. He gets staggered. And he's dead. So, if you're not trying to uh, necessarily, because parrying is very is very risky unless there is a move that you know you have trouble dodging or avoiding. I would highly recommend not to dodge. No, no not to uh, dodge, but try to parry instead. Another thing about parrying is your blood veils. Your blood veils all have different parry timings for example the stinger type is kind of a bit slow it takes a bit of time to come out but it's definitely not as fast as the uh, as the ogre type the ogre type is probably going to be one of the fastest but the fastest blood veil in terms of parry in my opinion in how it how it feels is this one the uh, hound type the hound type is very good in terms of parry I also feel like it has a little forward hitbox to it, so because of that, you can parry an enemy from a certain distance. They don't necessarily have to be in your face, and you'll be able to parry the enemy with this blood veil. The worst blood veil in terms of parry is the ivy type, unfortunately. Very slow. It takes a lot of time to come out. The parry takes a lot of time to come out, and the recovery on the parry is also one of the worst. You do not, you should never try to parry this blood veil. I know this from experience because my favorite blood veil uh, was this one. It looks cool, but definitely not fitting for me because I'm a huge tryhard. I like to try ridiculous stuff like this, but uh, the parry was probably one of the worst thing about this blood veil. So yeah. Uh, Anyways, I think that is that sums it up uh, for this guide on how to solo the game and how it is actually possible to solo Code And trust me, even on the hardest boss, uh, which without spoiling anything, you sh some of you may know, it is definitely possible to solo that boss. I soloed it uh, normally and I also soloed it in the, uh, in the story and in the depth version. So definitely possible, you just have to know how to use everything that is uh, in your hands, know your build and all that stuff, but yeah. Uh, so anyways, thank you all so much for watching, uh, it's been fun, I haven't made this type of video in a while. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, always very appreciated, I've been having a very healthy growth for my channel recently, which is, which is good. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Let's try that again. Oh man, I walked in too fast. Damn it. Come on. There you
Oh, I'm still using the black halberd. Well. Alright, half an uh random student. Perfect. Easy.